Hello everybody, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music, in this video today, reviewing Spitfire's latest, well, their almost latest offering, uh, Labs, free tools, soft piano and strings, retooled from a old sort of charity offering that they had, reskinned, new user experience, new user interface, thorns, roses, all the rest of it, we will get into it, but first, a little something that I wrote using this um, new little set of tools. Here we go. By the way, it was totally intentional to take my foot off the sustain pedal there and just have those sort of naked, muted, exposed notes. Totally intentional. Anyway, so let's get into it. What do I think of this this offering? Um, before I get into it, I'm just going to seacrest this a little bit longer, which is like delaying my thoughts. There are some people who think that you should not, um, not criticize, but you shouldn't sort of dissect uh, a free product. Like, hey, it's free. Just be happy that it's free. You know, I'm in like I'm about 18% sympathetic to that argument. I think that it's a product nonetheless. It's an opportunity, which we'll get to in, in the last little bit here. It's an opportunity opportunity to bring more people into the fold of the Spitfire um, sort of story and create sort of lifetime value out of those new customers. So I think that it deserves dissection. I think that it deserves some criticism. It deserves to be put through its paces. Even though it's free, it's still a product. Um, I think most people who want it usually, well, I think in my case anyway, I already, I didn't have to do this, but I think most people that do want this product have to put their email in. So there is a transaction of sorts. You are paying with your personal information. Um, so yeah, it's a product. So let's talk about it. I have a lot of things to say about it. Um, first of all, very striking, Spitfire, um, boom. This is the user interface, and the user experience is also kind of fresh and new and exciting and weird. Um, two parameters here. This looks a little bit like something out of Stargate, the 90s movie. It's great if you haven't seen it. Just like, you know, symbols, and it's this super sort of ivory blasting at your face. From what I understand, this user interface was put out there. Um, in keeping with the whole kind of theme of the rebranding of the uh, the whole labs thing, which was to make a very accessible, you know, free product and sort of like get people who wouldn't normally be associated with or who, who get people who think that, you know, sample libraries in the classical realm are too daunting and weird and, and wonderful and all the rest of it. Get them into this world via a very easy to use user interface. So we have two sliders here. Uh, I believe one is dynamics and one is expression. And we have another over here. Big knob does the job. This is reverb. So we can dial in whatever percent we, we want and all the rest of it for the reverb. We go all the way around the wheel. Um, and we also have, you know, tuning and panning and loudness or volume over here. I say loudness because volume is like, it doesn't really make sense to me as an audio term. Volume is like something when you're like measuring stuff in beakers. Um, at any rate, 
Um, that's it for piano. I mean, it's really simple to use. The drop down menu here reveals, exposes, you know, the next um, tool in here. In this case, it's strings, piano, and you can see we have a number of, you know, we have a lot of negative space all over this GUI actually, but mostly. Um, it's over here, which I assume is going to be populated with more offerings as they become available. You just load stuff, you can get a little preview of the library, blah, 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 blah. Um, soloed, the piano sounds like this. And when I say the piano sounds like this, I mean this is how I've made it sound. Um, it's a very intimate sound. If I press A in Logic, we're going to reveal uh, some automation that I've written. I believe I did some expression automation here. Where is it? There it is. Labs. Boom. Expression. Oh, we've lost the sustain. Where is my expression automation? Show it to me. Oh, it's dynamics that I was doing. Yeah, automating dynamics. Just to give some life to it. Although I thought this was expression. Oh, whatever. You can control it via the mod wheel. Pretty simple to use. So it's like a felty kind of piano. Um, reminds me a little bit of like Niels Fromm's Una Corda, but it's free, and there you go. Uh, we have another uh, little patch down here, accent strings. And for that, boom, I'm using the strings long patch. You go here, strings, you've got short, ensemble, and long. I thought long did the job pretty well. And this is just me holding down a couple of notes and doing a bit of automation to add a little bit of excitement to this area as we introduce more instruments. We have the low notes over here. And these are just octaves that I programmed with the chord trigger MIDI tool here. Not doing any automation. This is just to, to give some oomph to this section. And then we have the low strings. I chose again the ensemble patch. It just sounds really good. I think it sounds really good anyway, you know, got some low strings in there. Not too sure exactly what strings are in there, but I think that this, the whole kind of spirit of this library is really meant to um, be kind of like, like, don't think about the specs. Don't think about, you know, how we sampled, where we sampled with what. It's just like hit a note, get a sound, get going, get moving, get inspired, get creative. And down with Thatcher, man. Anyone can... Anyway, um, that was the kind of vibe in Christian Henson's video, uh, which was, you know, entertaining, like most of his videos are. So you've seen it. The GUI is very, very different for a Spitfire offering. Two sliders. Obviously, if you're in strings, you can, uh, I say obviously, but if you didn't know, you can right click there on the center button and uh, reveal either release or, or reverb controls. And the release controls, as you push this to, I guess, more positive values, will delay the amount of time it takes, I think, for you to hit a new set of notes to make it, I guess, more natural. Um, or it's kind of, it's a bit, it reminds you a little bit of a weird kind of orchestral portamento, like it take it delays the amount of time it takes for the other set of notes to kick in once you've, you know, gone up a note or, you know, you're doing interval, interval work. It just kind of delays that, you know, I'll give an example here. So if I push this, so for example, if I go to release mode here, um, we get this sideways little icon, which looks a little bit to me like a butt, if I'm being honest, a little butt to the side, just kind of like get a little fart out. So we have our stuff here over to the max. And now when I go to E from C, a little bit of a delay, right? So if I bring this all the way down and do the same thing, a very quick transition between notes. So depending on the kind of material you're working with and the kind of, you know, the context of the cue, it might make sense to have this sort of at midnight, 12 o'clock. Or to have it all the way over here. Just makes for a really nice natural switching between notes, which is uh, welcome for sure. Right click to bring it back to reverb. So it's kind of like multifunctional, which is nice. Um,
So again, this GUI is interesting and problematic in my view. It's interesting in that um, it's definitely trying to make a statement about the kind of user Spitfire wants to be playing with this library. Um, again, this is not a tool for people um, who are easily scared by you know, music theory and orchestral terms and all the rest of it. This is a tool for people who are curious about composing and just want something that's going to get them a great sound very quickly. Um, you'll notice that as I hover over these guys here, like maybe this is a labs thing or something, but usually when you hover over something, by, by the way, this is a the Spitfire app. This isn't, I'm looking, waving at my screen like an idiot wizard just casting a stupid spell. You can't see what I'm waving at. This, that makes way more sense. This is not contact. You have to download an app and then you get this sort of you know, custom GUI. Um, as I go over these sliders here, you see that even if we hover over them, we get percentages and values, but we don't actually get like, you know, dynamics, expression. Um, even if I, ha as I hover over that, we don't really know what this thing is doing. We can infer from these uh, Stargate diagrams that they, they must do something, you know, and you sort of, I think in that way, you're kind of encouraged to twist the knobs and play with the potentiometers and faders and just go, oh, that's what it's doing, and sort of, you know, see it for yourself. I think this whole idea of doing it this way is uh, good for a couple of reasons. It's good for, like, internationalization, like, like um, what do you want to call it? Like, if you're, if you're going to put this library out in, uh, you know, a country and the people in that country are, are not native English speakers, you know, they can feel like, oh, they can play with this too. Um, uh, on Christian Henson's blog, there was a, uh, his videos, there was a moment where he was flipping between his sort of rationale for why he designed it this way. And there's a quick second where you see uh, a deck slide from one of the decks and it's like, you know, to make it accessible, uh, you know, easy to read for the disabled if you have like any sort of visual impairments. So it's clear that this is boom, to make it really easy for everyone to use. I've repeated myself like 5,000 times. Where I think this becomes a bit of a problem is mainly, and I think in in trying to think of Spitfire's overall goal with this new retooling and re-release of, of labs. First of all, like, do I like this product? Yeah, I do. And as they release more stuff, as they retool more of the older um, things in the labs lineup and bring them into this sort of uh, this, you know, bone white universe they've created i'm definitely going to be interested i'm going to try this stuff it's free so why not right but i think if they're i mean there's 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 the public goal and then there's like the private the public goal of this whole thing is again bring people in demystify composing i think the private goal of this whole thing is really just uh you know a customer acquisition scheme so this is for spitfire i mean spitfire is a business right they wouldn't like retool these libraries give them new skins and uis and all the rest of it if they just wanted to be like down with thatcher man come on compose like no this whole thing is to get new customers bring them in everyone does this sound toys does this you know they have like little labs little altar boys little echo boy and that's just like a gateway drug to get you into the brand ableton does this with ableton light um I think Pro Tools has like Pro Tools first and Orchestral Tools has like, you know, some sort of starter Orchestral Tools thing all to get, you know, an email through um, or, you know, to offer it at like a heavy discount. And then eventually they can, you know, send you an email and get you part of like a nurture stream and then build you up and cross grade or upgrade you to other products and get lifetime value out of you as a customer. That's what this whole thing is about. That's why they've done this in my view. And I, I'm pretty I feel like I know what I'm talking about. That's why this thing exists. Um, it can also have other, like it can be two things at once. It can also be to empower people and all the rest of it. But where I think Spitfire is going to run into a bit of a problem is, let's say, um, you know, I've picked up the piano, right? Uh, and I'm going to go and use this thing for free until I feel like I've I've reached my limit with how creative I feel with the, you know, limited set of parameters and tools here. I want a grand piano, or I want like a more, you know, I want an extended piano um, uh, it, with the same kind of felt feel. So what I do is, if I don't get an email from Spitfire, which I'd be amazed if I didn't, if I downloaded this product and they didn't try and upgrade me, I would go to the website. And if I go to the website now, you know, I'll go to the keys section here, you know, keys, pianos rather, and I take a look at the pianos, and I'd be like, oh, you know, I want the I want this felt piano. It's like the the upgraded version, you know, of what I have now for free. If you look at the GUI, 
here's the problem if this thing wants to load the uh this is the gui for your upgrade to me this is like this is jarring if i'm a brand new spitfire user and i'm coming off of labs down with thatcher labs and i go to you know the producer portfolio felt piano that like that look at all the parameters this is like really daunting and I feel like people, for better or for worse, just they judge GUIs. They've, people always have. We talked about Ableton a minute ago. People were harping on Ableton for like years about its super flat, weird design. You know, it looked like, you know, the inside of a robot. or It was just so basic and boring and gray and weird. But now that aesthetic is kind of championed and everyone is going for a flat look. But there were perceived limitations, uh, you know, of Ableton um, by the, you know, music making community because of the GUI. Um, a lot of people will download a plugin now, and if it's not Retina uh, display ready, or if it's kind of skeuomorphic and that it looks a bit like a panel, you know, like the LA2A, for example, from UAD, I, I think it's got scratches on it, the the, the digital one. Um, you know, some people think that that makes the, that means the plugin's going to sound better than if it's just a number of ones and zeros and everything. And when we have such a discrepancy between GUIs from the free thing, the gateway drug thing, the customer acquisition thing, to what you can expect once you become embedded into the, you know, Spitfire um, uh, ecosystem, you know, and a customer for life, this can be like a, a really big problem for someone, I think. Uh, this is like paralysis by analysis. We have a whole bunch of different mic mixes, uh, you know, transpose, CC mapping, uh, round robin, blo like this is just, it's just jarring. And also it requires you to go from the Spitfire thing to, you know, which is not contact based to contact. And some of these keys, some of these piano libraries, um, they're not like just, you know, like the free version, those like the full version of contact that you have to bring it into. So you probably have to spend a bit of money before even being able to use the library that you um, have to pay to use. So that's one thing, the sort of GUI leap of faith that Spitfire has expected its customers to make. Now, I don't work for Spitfire, <laughs> obviously. Um, they might be you know, in the middle of retooling all of their libraries to sort of meet this standard that we see here in Logic with the, um, with the labs here. They could be doing that, I don't know, but that's one sort of caveat. The other issue that I have, and this is again going on my premise that this is a customer acquisition move, you know, build the brand, bring new people in, grow the business over time. Um, let's say we go to strings, okay? Let's say we're gonna go to strings. I, Jeff Manchester, have picked up my first, you know, labs thing, strings. I love it. And then I get the email or I go to the website or whatever, and I want a, a bigger strings experience. We're going from free, okay? This is free. Well, not free if you count surrendering your email, which is like a foregone conclusion these days. And you go to the strings section and look at what they have to offer. And I don't mean look at like, look at all the stuff they have to offer. Obviously, they have some great offerings, as you know, if you've, if you've been on my channel. But look at the price leap if you want something like next level, the next thing up. You know, Hans Zimmer strings, let's say you want to go to Hans Zimmer. It's $7.99. In Canada, that's $1,000. So you're going from zero, no money, to $1,000. And I really believe that that is the jump, zero to a whole bunch of money. If you downloaded Labs, Lab strings, um, usually when you download like a, like a, uh, a basic tiered version of something, so Ableton Lite, um, because you spent some money, you can get like a special upgrade code, right? Um, you might save like 50 bucks off the upgrade to the larger product, which um, again is consistent in GUI, right? It's the same GUI, they haven't changed anything. There's more features or whatever, but it's not as jarring a leap as, as you know, as, as issue one that I pointed out. But also the price difference is not like, you know, you don't need a neck brace to go from like, Spitfire lab strings to Hans Zimmer strings. But even if you're not going to Hans, let's say you want to go to something else. Let's say you want to go to one of the cheapest strings things that they offer here. I think one of the cheapest ones they offer, well, we can't do mass or whatever because that's more like a sort of a controller for a bunch of other, um, as far as I, as I know, uh, for symphonic strings and all the rest of it. What's the cheapest thing that Spitfire does? I mean, the uh, electric cello, that's just a cello. You get a whole bunch more value with strings, uh, the lab strings. So let's let's find the next one up here. That's 99 bucks. I'm thinking the next one up might be, you know, a grid 249. That's really just a textural product that, you know, has a bunch of like pegs in a thing. 
that's not even a full orchestra, really. And you don't kind of have the same control that you do um, and individual kind of voicing the stuff that you do with, with labs. But still, let's say that that's, that's the upgrade path. Hey, you like lab strings? Check out Evo Grid. That's two hundred. That's like three hundred dollars Canadian, going from zero dollars to three hundred Canadian. I don't understand the upgrade story with this product. I think that if if Spitfire is truly, genuinely trying to demystify classical composing and neoclassical composing and open the door and usher people in in a, a way that I think is really positive and needs to happen, the way that they're doing it, like they've positioned themselves as like a premium product company. They're like the st- I want to say the Starbucks, but not really. They're like the super artisanal coffee shop that charges like $4 for an espresso because like they sourced it from this really amazing place and they pay all the farmers and they bring it over on a train because like jet fuel is too pollutant or whatever. Like that's what Spitfire is. So to to be welcomed into this like down with Thatcher product, to be welcomed in through that, to finally find your way here, I think is really jarring and I think makes for a super complicated upgrade story. Um you know, and I, I don't know if this is really fulfilling the kind of like uh, the kind of utopian we're all in this together, rah, rah, down with the, the elitists and classes. I don't know if this is going to be able uh, to be a really compelling way into the company for people who aren't already in it. Um, but I guess getting back to my original thoughts, do I think this is a super capable library with a lot of value? I, I guess the not library, but like the whole labs thing. Absolutely. It's super valuable. It's awesome. Um, if you like what you heard, you know, look no further than the lab stuff. I mean, I used a couple little plugins here and there to EQ, for example, I used, um, uh, you can use whatever EQ you want really, but I threw Neutron 2 here with a couple of dynamic nodes from 2 to uh, 200, sorry, to 2K, just to control some peaks and all the rest of it. Um, but do I think this is something that people should download? Absolutely. It's free. What do you have to lose? Go ahead and do it. You know, your email address. You can just like say unsubscribe if you're annoyed. Um, awesome product. I'm excited to see what else comes comes out. But like after seeing all the rest of the stuff that's out there and having a pretty good understanding of upgrade stories and upgrade paths, I don't know if this is the best way for Spitfire to bring people into the fold, into the brand, and get lifetime value out of those people. Um, the GUI jump is jarring and just crazy, and the price jump is insane. If, like, I might be wrong, if they're willing to to offer people who've started with labs a really insane upgrade price, like a really super steep, like pst, only you get this upgrade price, then maybe. Um, but I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you think? Do you think I'm going too crazy with this stuff? Do you think it even matters that I'm worried about like Spitfire marketing and like longevity and upgrade paths? I don't know. But thanks for watching. Take care.